Hello, this video is the first of a new series where I'm going to be interviewing a bunch of different artists whilst taking their portrait. The first one is with the amazing musician Choker. I hope you enjoy it. If we're going to talk about like a portrait of who you are, mm. I guess it makes sense to talk about growing up in Detroit yeah. and how it all got started. Yeah. Growing up in Detroit, I was kind of isolated just because my mom was very protective. So I wasn't very involved in any particular like Detroit scenes or I wasn't like running around the city that much. So a lot of what I got out of the culture of Detroit was do like reading and do research of things that happened before my time, like researching Jay Dilla or researching like Moody Man even, just things that like a little bit before my time, things were getting popping and people were really defining the sound of Detroit. But um, in terms of like my current time, since I was just inside all the time, I didn't really get to see much of the city until I got a little bit older. And then by that time, um, a lot of things have slowly become a little gentrified and a little bit of the culture is uh, shifting now towards at least like the younger people coming in and trying to change things. So uh, I don't really have much to say about like Detroit as a kid really. Yeah. yeah. When did you move on to LA? Um, I moved to LA last year. Okay. Yeah. So it was there until quite recently, I guess. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Would you say now that you're still trying to like project more Detroit whilst you're making stuff in LA? Or are you trying to like um, soak up some more new influences? I'm usually thinking about new influences because I'm not much of a location-based person. Like I'm not a very like, oh, this is my hometown. Like I, I claim this place or like moving to a new place. Like, oh, like this is a new uh, experience. I'm just more so like, I'm a very present person and I'm a very insular person. So a lot of my inspiration kind of comes from just like my thoughts. And then, of course, my thoughts are a reflection of things that I'm experiencing and like new things that I'm seeing. But generally, I'm not thinking much about like how my surroundings are going to affect what I'm doing. They just kind of naturally do affect what I'm doing. I guess that comes from also like staying inside more. Yeah being an online or book mm. reading person that yeah, like yeah. soaks up things from other resources, I guess. Yeah, exactly. So how many projects did you make in Detroit before you moved over? Um, I made Peak, my first project in Detroit. And then like all the stuff that I had made and just kind of like thrown up on the internet is like kind of like scattered ideas. I made all of that stuff in Detroit, but the um, when I made Honey Bloom, I made maybe like 60 or 50% of that in Detroit. And then that was kind of when I was transitioning into Los Angeles and kind of visiting there for the first time. So for the second half of Honey Bloom, I made most of that in Los Angeles. I just took like a couple months, just hung out there. And do you think that's changed a lot from making something like completely in your basement? To yeah. Yeah, 100%, just because I had never, like, worked with anyone before. I had never collaborated with people. And in coming to Los Angeles, a lot of the culture out there is, like, meeting people and, like, working with new people and learning stuff about, like, production and learning stuff about songwriting and just stuff that is kind of hard to pick up just reading about it. It's a lot easier, like, being in person with someone to learn things like that. So... Yeah, it was, I think, a necessary transition, just having to work with people for the first time and just being able to, like, kind of get out of my own head a little bit just because I'm always, like, super, just, like, like I was saying, like, insular and, like, just self-focused. So it's nice to hear other people's opinions on stuff when you're making something just so it's not, like, you just kind of, like, staring at a wall and, like, not knowing how to get over this wall. 
having someone like stand next to you and like stare at the wall like oh there's this way you can do it or like this is what I think or things like that which is nice yeah um I think I read before that the three EPs you released were based mm. off of a, a photo that you saw yeah it's this uh Pascal Maitre photo of these uh, three little black girls at their first communion. And I thought maybe also if you feel like a lot of your inspiration comes from like stuff outside of like necessarily where you are, mm. if it comes more so from like imagery that you're seeing and stuff like that, how do you think like you find that initial kind of like urge to make something or spark? Is it like oh. just ingesting things and how do you then like transform looking at a photo into a song? How do you know how to capture that? Um, yeah, it's usually interesting things, whether it be something that I see or something that I experience that inspires me to figure out creatively how to capture that feeling. So a lot of what I'm doing is feeling some sort of emotion, like some sort of visceral thing that really moves me and then kind of trying to recreate that movement through my creation, or at least try to figure out some way, if not to explain what I'm feeling, at least how to um, just frame it in a way that people are able to take it in after. So if it's like a photograph or something like that, just when I'm looking at something, whether it be like, uh, like this ground or something, like everything to me has a sound to it, or everything to me has a way that you can talk about it or write about it that someone else, when they hear it or see it later, they can, if you do it right, they can imagine you sitting there experiencing that thing. So when I'm just like seeing something that moves me in some sort of way, then it's just figuring out which way creatively is the way that I can best represent that, whether it be through writing or it be through chords or it be through like a sonic texture, like through making a synth from scratch and trying to make a sound that sounds like something that I felt. Or it can be visually, like maybe I feel something and the only way to get out that feeling to me is through like a shot or like through really cool cinematography or something like that. So um, all avenues of creativity are kind of connected to me in terms of like everything can kind of piggyback off of the other. So it's just a matter of kind of experimenting at that point, figuring out which one feels the best. Do you think, so like most of your songs have a very kind of fluid structure and they're not always like super, um, I don't know what the, the correct word would be, like standard song yeah. structures. Like you often have like a beat switch or something like mm. very progressive. Mm. Do you think that's like, part of trying to tell these stories and like yeah. evoke emotions through it is like an, is that one of the ways you use to like sure this ground you can talk about in this way but mm. the more you can elaborate on it and like meander through a song through different yeah. styles 100 percent. my ideas or my emotions are never stagnant so anytime that i'm thinking of something and like i come up with the initial way that i feel then as I'm exploring that feeling, new ways usually emerge. And I like to try to reflect those in the music or reflect those in any sort of like sonic design I'm doing just because I want, I want to try to capture all of those turns. Okay. So you just finished a European tour. Yes. First time yes. performing outside of the country. Yes. How was it? Uh, it was really sick. It was really awesome. It was cool to just ex experience firsthand making something and like really seeing the full reach of it just because at least in the U.S. like it's easy to like see people and it's just like American kids and there's just this feeling of uh it's just familiar you know what I'm saying like it it can, you can kind of wrap your head around a little bit more, but when you're going to a place and you're seeing these people who speak a completely different language and their culture is completely different 
and just the way that they present themselves is different just because they've been raised on the complete other side of the world. It's just like really, it really hits me how crazy it is that people are accepting of my art and it's just really like heartwarming to see that and it's really inspiring. It inspires me to make more stuff just because I want to continue being able to connect with people even if I'm not like in their space, like I'm not in their country. Yeah. When you finished your, I think it was your first tour, I'm mm -hmm. guessing it was, you released like a, a message of sorts, I guess, just some text, mm -hmm. kind of like summing up your feelings. Yeah. I remember reading that at the time, and there was one uh, quote right at the end, which I mm. thought was really, really strong. I wanted your explanation of it. Sure. So you said, I dream how I live, but I don't live how I dream. Mm. I just thought that was really nice. Thank you. And I'd like to hear what you were actually thinking when you said that. Mm. Um, I just always have these aspirations to do things that somehow don't feel attainable. And then when I do attain those things, it almost feels so surreal that it's like, it's not actually like happening to me or like, I don't know, I struggle with like imposter syndrome. So even if I accomplish something, I always figure out some new way to make it seem to myself like, oh, that was like a fluke or that was just luck or I didn't really earn that experience. So I don't know. It's just something I struggle with a lot in terms of self-validation and giving myself a chance to feel like I've accomplished things. I'm just always uh, on to the next thing. Anytime anything happens, whether it be positive or good, or bad, I just kind of move on, like I process it for a bit and then I'm on to the next thing. So yeah, it just, when things happen, I'm just always in this weird kind of gray area in between of like trying to really feel it through and really be like, oh yeah, like that's cool, but also not trying to get caught up in how cool something is and not dwelling on something like that. Cool. Um, if you could give one piece of I don't know, like a message or just like a short piece of advice. Mm. If you could give that to, I don't know what age you were, younger self yeah. in the basement in Detroit, what would you have said to yourself? What would I have said to myself? Hmm. Mm hmm. Um, I'd say be more open, be more vulnerable. Just because now I'm kind of going through that stage of vulnerability and that stage of openness where I'm starting to share things more with the people around me who I care about. But at that age, I was just so, just really just in my own lane and not very comfortable sharing those things with people that it would feel just like, I'd feel very alone all the time in my feelings. So now it's been nice to kind of share things with people and at the very least feel some sort of solidarity and ultimately solidarity only goes so far when you're trying to improve or you're trying to uh, get a grasp of how you're feeling but it's still a nice thing to be able to just share stuff. I just never shared things when I was younger.